Welcome to the Preliminary Cost Estimating Tool Training Series. In this segment, we'll be taking a look at the curb and sidewalk section. Okay, so uh, if you'd like to know how we got to this starting point here, uh, you can check out our previous training videos uh, from the general overview up to the earthwork section. Um, for this one, we're going to take a look at curb and sidewalk. Uh, we're going to start out by changing our toggle to yes to add the curb and sidewalk section here. Um, and that will bring up our uh, curb and sidewalk inputs. Uh, so the first thing up top here is number of isolated curb ramp replacements not included in other sidewalk work. So this is basically um, if you have like an ADA specific job maybe where you're doing a bunch of curb ramp upgrades all over the place, um, it'll use uh, an all-inclusive item uh, for the curb ramps um, as opposed to uh, let's say a linear project where you're replacing all the sidewalk anyway. Uh, typically you would include all of the work for the, for the ramp. Uh, in the individual components for the work um, and that's where you'd use uh, this section uh, down below here um, and it would include your, your ramp work in, in the various sidewalk and curb items. Um, so let's say we've got kind of a mix of both. Um, let's say we're doing uh, 20, 20 curb ramps kind of out on their own and then we'll also come down and add uh, some curb and sidewalk. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, curbing first here. Um, you can select from the drop down uh, these roads that you entered up above. Uh, there's a note here, must complete roadway section above to populate the road name list. So if you don't have anything there, uh, we're going to scroll up to the top and it's pulling those uh, roadways from these cells here uh, that you enter in the pavement section. <clears throat> so coming back down, uh, let's say we're going to put a, side, a curb and sidewalk on NY123. You can also put a description here uh, if you wish to be a little more specific. Um, I'm not going to, but this doesn't affect any calculations uh, no matter what you put in this cell. Uh, length of roadway calculated from pavement sections. So this, this length here, uh, if you hover over it, you get the note. Uh, this length is utilized to calculate lengths um, for the percentage inputs below. Um, this number comes from the pavement sections above, so we're looking at NY123. So if we scroll up here uh, and look at our NY123 section, we have 5,000 feet, uh, which corresponds with that. If you had multiple sections for NY123, it would sum them all together um, to give you a total right here, um, just as, as a reference to uh, what you're working with here. Um, next, we're going to select our type of curb. You get vertical, mountable, traversable. Um, for this one, let's use a traversable curb. Uh, curb construction, cast in place concrete, precast concrete, granite, stone, or asphalt. Um, let's use a cast in place concrete for that one. And let's say on the right, we know we're doing the entire thing. So we're going to put in a percentage. You'll see that's going to calculate 5,000 feet for uh, curb on the right. And then let's take a look at the left. Let's say we know um, we only have 4,000 feet of curb on the left. Um, so we can put in a manual length there and that can go in. And you'll see, you can change the percentage and it'll automatically calculate it. it you know, if you're really early into a preliminary estimate here, uh, this is this can be useful if you're just uh, taking a look and saying yeah about half of it's gonna have curb 
uh, so you can enter that in there. Uh, the next line here is um, percent or length in median. Uh, so if you have a divided highway that's going to be curbed, uh, you can enter that in here as well. And just one thing I want to show you here, um, when we put in 100% here, it'll multiply your length by 2, um, assuming your median has curb on both sides. Let's get rid of that for now. Um, and then, of course, if you want to add another curb segment, uh, we can hit the plus, uh, which will add um, another curb segment for you. If you don't want it, click the X to delete it. Um, and the add and delete works the same way for, for the sidewalk, um, which we're going to head down to next. So road name, um, same deal as the curb above. Uh, these are populated from the uh, pavement section. Um, same thing with length of roadway. Um, yeah, those are populated from above. Uh, just sums together all your road sections uh, based on your selection. Um, with the sidewalk, we're going to go five feet by default. Um, if you want to do a raised median, um, you would input a zero here and input the length of raised median in length on right below and then use the buffer strip portion uh, to enter the raised median width and your surface treatment. Um, just for how the calculations work, um, this is this is how you would have to input something for that. Okay, next we're going to go to sidewalk material. Um, let's pick concrete here. And let's say we have, um, we'll put the same thing, we'll just say we have uh, sidewalk everywhere we have curb so we'll enter in 100% on the right 4,000 feet on the left and you'll notice uh, it's coming up with an area of sidewalk over here uh, based on the width and the length um, depending on which you enter um, we can also add a buffer strip for the whole segment uh, so we'll select the S there um, let's say we have a five foot buffer and we can call it asphalt. And now we have a uh, itemized subtotal for curb and sidewalk. Um, you can also use this section to uh, estimate a multi-use trail. Um, you would enter it the same way you'd enter a sidewalk um, except um, you know, maybe it's not tied to a road. You don't have to put a road name in here. Um, you can leave that blank and just enter a length for that. Um, and for for a multi-use trail, you know, kind of out on its own, just enter it in either one of these is fine um, for a length. Um, obviously, the percentage is not going to work if you don't have a road name, so you'll have to use the length for that. Uh, unless it happens to follow a roadway, in which case you'd be able to do this. Um, down below here we also have user-defined non-itemized costs uh, where you can enter in a lump sum for some scope of work that may be missing from the itemized calculations. So we'll just add something in here. And let's just say that'll be $25,000 which populates down below in the lump sum total. And then we have the curb and sidewalk itemized subtotal as well. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the uh, curb and sidewalk worksheet tab. So you can see uh, our first input on the top for the isolated curb ramps comes in here, um, uses uh, this item number 
uh, you're, you can override the item number. Um, we just assume a uh, type 4 uh, curb ramp. Uh, that was just the most commonly used in the pay item catalog, so that's what we went with by default. Uh, you can either override them uh, globally um, for an item number, you can override the quantity here, or you can enter them individually um, with a type and a quantity for each type. Uh, moving on, um, under the curb section here, you'll notice we have 9,000 feet of traversable cast in place concrete curb. Uh, based on the inputs you select on the data entry tab, uh, these will populate a length uh, based on your selections. Um, and it already has pre populated item numbers over here. If you have something uh, that you're using that's not standard, you can come over here and override your item number. Coming down to sidewalk and multi-use trail, uh, you'll notice uh, thickness. We have four inches by default. Uh, this item will populate um, for your concrete. Uh, you can override your item number here if you wish. Um, and then we have an area that's calculated um, for your sidewalk or your multi-use trail. If you have an actual area, maybe you have a CAD shape, uh, you can enter that in here. Let's say we measured it in CAD and it's 50,000 square feet. And just as an example, I'm going to put uh, 50,000 square foot uh, measured in CAD. And then that will uh, update your quantity based on your new area. Um, your asphalt sidewalk and multi-use trail, this works the same exact way. Um, different item number um, and obviously calculates tons instead of cubic yards uh, for that item. And moving down to buffer strip uh, for concrete and asphalt buffers, same exact inputs here. Um, as you have above, uh, you can use a different thickness. For example, asphalt buffer by default is three inches, whereas the asphalt sidewalk or multi-use trail is four inches by default. Um, and you have the flexibility to change those as well. Uh, again, item number overrides area overrides, and then quantity overrides. There's also a segment in here for a grass buffer strip. Uh, by default, we're using four inches of topsoil, and it will calculate your topsoil uh, items uh, and your seeding items and quantities. Uh, you have the ability to override this as well. And uh, the last section was the subbase. Um, by default, it's going to select a subbase type based on regional preferences, um, which will develop your item number. Uh, you also have the ability to override the item number if you don't want to use uh, the item number this comes up with. Um, and then it's broken into three sections. You have your subbase for curb, subbase for sidewalk, and your subbase for your buffer. Uh, by default, all of these thicknesses are six inches. Uh, we give you the flexibility to change those thicknesses as you wish, as well as override your actual quantity there. And uh, these quantities will update if you override the areas up here. Um, it will update with those as well. Uh, moving on, we have additional items, user-defined defin items and quantities. So you can manually enter an item number, uh, quantity, and unit, and any notes that go along with it. So for example, we can put in some 20302 here. Um, you know, maybe we, we know 
there's going to be some excavation here, you know, 500 cubic yards, we'll say, uh, that we want included in uh, our overall cost for a curb and sidewalk. And we'll just call this excavation for sidewalk. And you'll see that shows up in our curb and sidewalk item list. Um, where everything is summed together, uh, unit prices are automatically generated. And a subtotal is created down at the bottom here. And then this number is referenced back into our data entry tab in the curb and sidewalk itemized subtotal. And we have our curb and sidewalk total. And that concludes the curb and sidewalk section segment of the preliminary cost estimating tool training series. For additional preliminary cost estimating tool training, be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.